Welcome back, everybody, to another Q&A episode. So for anybody new to these, welcome. Thank you for joining us. These are just me answering a few questions that come in from our community. So if you have some questions of your own, please feel free to ask me anything that's on your mind. But let's get into the question. Sorry to take up your time, but I read an article. To be honest, it wasn't that great of an article, so I don't really want to link it here. But he goes on to say, and it was talking about how the VIX is normally 20. Since it's currently 10, shouldn't we be buying the VXX instead of being in cash? So first of all, you're never taking up my time by asking questions. Understanding the strategies and the markets a little better is really the most important part of this process. So please, ask me anything that's on your mind. I'm always here to help. But that's a great question, and quite a timely one here in mid-2017, because it's not just the S&P 500 that's at all-time highs. I think general talk of volatility and just the sheer number of articles that's being written on the subject is also at all-time highs. If you want articles to be picked up these days, you just hashtag VIX, hashtag XIV, and it's basically guaranteed eyeballs on the page. But there's a huge discrepancy of opinion among these experts. On the one side, you'll have people who say the average VIX is near 20, so it must be a sign of an imminent crash that we see it right now at 10. And on the other side, you'll have people say that actually a low VIX is fairly normal, and it may even be a sign of strength. So who's right? As we know, statistics are malleable. They can basically be massaged to support any position. So I thought it might be helpful if we actually try to nail down an answer to the question of what is a normal VIX price? And then after that, what does a low VIX mean to us and for our trading? So the easiest method to quantify the average VIX price, and the most common method by far, is to just use the mean. So calculating the mean is very simple. You just add up all the values, and then you divide by how many values there were. So if we get a basic example, adding up all these numbers, it equals 25. And since there's five values, it means the mean in this case is five. For VIX prices, we're just going to use all the values since the VIX futures launched in March of 2004. So adding up all the values and dividing by the number of days, we can see that the average VIX price, the mean for the VIX, is 18.89. So we could just stop there and say that the average VIX is 19. But there is a problem with this, and that is that the lowest closing price ever, what we call the print price, the lowest VIX print ever was 931 but the highest VIX print ever was 8086. And just as a side note, if we use the old VIX calculation and we drag that back through the famous crash of 1987, the old VIX would have printed over 150. So anyway, the high prices that we saw during the financial crisis in 2008 are really pulling up that mean value. So I think we can do a little better than the mean and use what's called the median. To calculate the median, it's just the middle number in a string of numbers. So for our example, 33469, the median in this case is 4. Doing the same thing for all the VIX prices since March of 2004, we see that the median VIX price is 15.98. So half the time it printed above 16 and half the time it printed below 16. In the case of lopsided numbers like we see in the VIX with a low near 10 and a high near 80, I think the median value is a much better representation than the mean. But we can go a step further and calculate the mode. Now the mode is just the number that occurs most often in a string of numbers. So in our simple example, 33469, the most common occurring number, the mode, is 3. So here's a distribution of VIX values since the VIX futures launched. And I'm just using the range of values, so anything in the 9s, the 10s, the 11s. Above 30, there's less occurrences, so I just group those into ranges of 5 points, so 30 to 35, 35 to 40, etc. But here's the distribution. The takeaway here is, the most number of occurrences happen at VIX prices in the 13s, then the 12s, then the 14s. So the mode of the VIX is 13, which is less than both the mean and the median. So answering the question of what's the average VIX price, it's not an exact science, of course, but I would say that the median of 16 and the mode of 13 is more meaningful in this case than the mean of 19. In the context of the VIX, it's the mean that's actually the least relevant. So let's sum this up. What does it all mean? Well, I think if we use a combination of the median and the mode, so 16 and 13, I think it's fair to say that the average VIX price is around 15. That's what I would call normal. So does that mean a VIX in the 10s like we see now is the sign of an imminent market crash? No. 
I wish it was that simple, but unfortunately, no. The VIX itself is just a statistic. It's not even an index in the traditional sense of the word. It's just a representation of the options activity on the S&P 500. A low VIX does not mean that a crash is imminent. And in fact, sometimes low volatility begets even lower volatility. That's normal. But having said that, what it can mean in the context of investing in volatility products is that the risk reward profile of shorting volatility becomes less attractive with lower VIX values. In the case of what we determined was a normal VIX, say around 15, you've got the roll yield and the volatility risk premium, which is what we're trying to harvest with these types of strategies. And then you've also got the potential of a decreasing volatility environment, which may also boost that substantially. But if the VIX is already at 10, like I said, it doesn't mean that a crash is imminent. It can stay low for a while. But what it does mean is that the potential for harvesting the roll yield is less. These volatility products can move quickly. And if the potential for capitalizing on the roll yield is just a fraction of what it could be, at that point it starts to resemble picking up pennies in front of a steamroller. Our volatility strategy isn't in cash because a crash is imminent. It's in cash because the risk reward profile has become too skewed to the risk side. I prefer investing on the reward side of that balance. Now we'll save that last bit for another video, but answering the original question, you're right, there are a lot of people talking about how the average VIX is close to 20, and so a VIX in the 10s must be a red alert, right? Run for the hills, and maybe even buy VXX shares or VIX calls. I would respond by saying, A, the average VIX is closer to 15 in a practical sense, and B, maybe more importantly, the VIX by itself can't be used to predict anything. It is just a statistic. So it's important to remember that. We'll put a pin in that one for a future video as well. But thank you very much for the question. And thanks to all of you for watching. See you next time. So go ahead and click the link right here. Sign up for the VTS newsletter. And when you do, you're going to get full access to all three of my trading strategies for a full two weeks absolutely free. And if you are new here, please consider subscribing to my channel. Also, if you have any questions or comments, I'd love to hear from you. So go ahead and leave those in the comment section. See you next time.